Hi, I'm Kyle Kaiser, and we're here at the Milwaukee Mile. Hey, guys, I'm Spencer Pickett. We've got a 100-lap race coming up. Enjoy the show. The Mazda Road to Indy season is moving along at a rapid pace, including this weekend here in Milwaukee. There's just four weekends remaining in the season. The drivers and teams got some much-needed time off after Toronto, but their minds are still on racing. So, Shelby, it's been a month since we've gone racing. What have you done over the last couple of weeks? Just a lot of training, basically, just getting back ready for uh, basically ovals. Ovals use a lot of different muscle groups in the drivers, so you're really just really focusing on making sure those muscles are ready for these long races. I mean, this race here is 100 miles, so just training a lot. I've still been busy back in the UK um, with the sort of PR and training, um, and Le Mans is a, it's a major race. It it's basically stretches over two, three weeks, so it takes quite a while, but it's, uh, it's nice to be back over on the state side. I went back home. I went to the nice sunny and beautiful island of Puerto Rico and uh, I got time to spend a good time with my family. I went to the beach, had a lot of fun and you know I really enjoyed myself. Tubing, wakeboarding, all sorts of stuff on the water and it was just a huge blast to uh, be able to be at home for a bit and hang out with my friends and do some fun stuff. Welcome to the Milwaukee Mile, the oldest speedway in the world. Indy Lights are about to go on track right now 145 miles an hour average speed is what we're expecting. These beautiful new Dallara IL-15 cars should no doubt be extremely quick here. Such a flat banking on the track, only nine and a half degrees. I think we're gonna see a crazy race. All right, so I'm about to roll out here on the Milwaukee Mile with my good friend Peter Dempsey alongside. Peter, I know that you had your first oval race here in 2009. How was that and what were kind of your, uh, your impressions? The great thing about this track is like a big road course, I wasn't too intimidated by any banking or anything, but uh, one of the most enjoyable experiences in my life. Uh, the worst thing about that weekend really was I got beaten by you, Anders. <laughs> that's right, that's where I got my uh, first and only Pro Mazda win, so you know, I'll, I'll take that. But here we are about to start a lap here at the Milwaukee Mile, very important to get it swung all the way out to the outside here to pick up some open, open radius here into turn one. Really, really tough visually because you need to start off really high here and then you cross onto that black stuff which then rotates the car all the way down here towards this curbing and then drift out again. Again, very, very tough visually here as we come onto the back straight. Extremely, extremely tough track and just like you alluded to, you don't have any banking to help you whatsoever. No. So I feel like all the moments that you have here are a lot more sort of critical. And then turn three and turn four is completely different. You have a little bit of a different line here. You can turn in a bit earlier then we can experiment with the black stuff here. A little bit of camber gain right in the middle of the corner here, and that tends to rotate the car. So if you have a free car, you need to stay off that. If you have a pushy car, you need to stay on it. It'll be very interesting now with the new car. You guys are really gonna have to look after the equipment to be there for the five for the last 20, 20, 25 laps. Well, I think we're in for a real treat and appreciate your time, Peter. So I'll, I'll take you back to the spotter stand now. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm here with John Brunner from Bellari Auto Racing to learn more about the team. Tell us, John, how the team started, when this idea came true. Oh, Brian uh, is a longtime racer, club racer, and just absolutely loves racing and decided he wanted to step up and decided to go all in. You're the team manager and how you got involved in this? I'm the same way. I'm very similar to Brian. I was uh, passionate about racing, went to work for a, uh, the first pro team in 1998, and just I've been doing it ever since. This is not an easy thing to do. It's the traveling, it's the dealing with different personalities, and it's a lot of stress. So what is, do you think that makes you keep doing it? I think it's the passion. I think, if you, I think the guys that have been around for a long time, there's passion. I think that's more than uh, making a living even. You know, there's other ways to make a living, obviously, but this is, and this can be really tough work. It can be very stressful. So there has to be a, a pretty, pretty strong desire there. Um, I've been doing this so long that I can't imagine doing something else, to be honest. You know, we're lucky enough that we, we had Gabby Chavez last year win the championship with us, and to see him in an IndyCar is, is really exciting for the team. It's, it's really exciting for Brian and Jill as well, but now you have that extra sense of hoping he's going to be okay out there and, and worrying about him a little bit. So, but it's, it's, it's fun. It's both mechanics and drivers to bring them up, see them come up through the ranks, spend some time with you and then move on to bigger, bigger things. It's, you know, it's a good feeling. What was the biggest high moment in your career that you said, you know what, 
that was very, very, very good. The two Freedom 100 wins, the back-to-back -back Freedom 100 wins were, are very, very high on my list. That's the race to win and to win it back-to-back -back was amazing. It seems to be that the car number five is the one that yeah. always wants to win that race. Do you see yourself doing something else? I can't imagine it. I mean, uh, yeah, I would, would imagine at some point I would need to, but right now I don't know what that would be. Thank you so much for your time uh, to show us around and understand a little bit more about uh, Team Valari. Hey guys, we're here at fourth base during Milwaukee Indie Fest and excited to sit down and talk to one of the young guns here in the Indy Lights program, Ethan Ringel for Schmidt-Peterson Motorsports. Ethan, a big weekend for you uh, during the month of May. With the momentum of having that good run in Indianapolis, yeah, that felt so good. That was a really uh, uh, big confidence booster for me. To uh, it was my first oval race ever, and uh, let alone be on a super speedway. So qualifying P1 was kind of like that shocker to me. And uh, you know, ever since ever since that day ended, I really wanted to you know speed up time, go to the next year and race again because I felt like I could have had it. This year is kind of like the year where I'm learning where I am in the midst of all things. So, you know, I'm just, I'm still just, I guess, just trying to take in as many things as I can and uh, develop myself the best for next year. It's key to point out the fact you don't really know the racetracks either, where some yeah. of these kids have come up through USF yeah. 2000 and Pro Mazda, followed the whole Mazda Road Indy. You kind of jumped around, yeah. you formed your yeah. Enterprise, you went to Europe, ran GP3, right. you came back, you run the Atlantic Championship and do very well. Yeah, I think the, um, the only, track that I've, I've had experience on is Mid-Ohio. Will you go in there with a bit of comfort, a comfort level though, oh, knowing you've run there before? Definitely more than the rest. And coming into this program, obviously brand new for you, tracks you've never been on before, right. race simulators, do you have one? Is it something you've been able to use to kind of accelerate the learning curve? Yeah, I actually attached to my room back in Orlando, I have a, um, it's called a base performance simulator, which is, a, it's a stationary tub and uh, of an F2 car. It's got everything with the, the force feedback from, uh, through the wheel and the, the pedals, which uh, to me I find the most important. What's your personality like? You chilled out? You, you, are you hyper? Very chilled out, I would say. Um, I'm to myself, kind of. Uh, I love video games. It's just my thing. I've been raised with them my whole life. Uh, I hang out with my girlfriend it's every not, day. It's not, oh, it's not overly unique among the among <laughs> racers. Uh, I think yeah. stick, can stick to themselves yeah. as well. I think it's. Yeah. You know, yeah. when you're in the car by yourself, it's just you. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, I, I know what I'm capable of, and uh, if I'm ever running into like a hard time, I'm definitely going to fix that myself. But, um, no, as of now, I, I like just relaxing. It takes the stress off of me. It's, it's very easy going. You know, I'm only 20 years old, and uh, so I know I have a really, you know, a great future ahead of me. Well, folks, another great opportunity for us to sit down and talk to one of the young, up-and-coming drivers here in the Mazda Road to Indy. Ethan Ringel, a young driver, came into this year as a raw rookie. Had to learn the racetracks, learn the race car. He's become one of the drivers to watch. We're excited to see what he's going to be able to do in 2016. Milwaukee, located next to Lake Michigan, is best known for its famous breweries. And Wisconsin as a whole is known as the dairy capital of the United States. We met up with Enders for a cheese tasting at Uber Tap Room. Well, welcome to the Uber Tap Room. Glad to have you guys here. So we got four different beers, four different cheeses to pair. So each one is gonna be paired exactly to go with the other one. What do you recommend to start with? Well, this is our uh, it's a cashmere hammer. Now see, this looks exactly like the same uh, type of oil I put in my car. This, uh, this Pleasant Ridge Reserve is one of the most awarded cheeses in the country. They use milk that only can be used uh, about from May to October, and that's how they, get the, they produce the best milk, which produces the best cheese. The next one is a Black Husky Pale Ale. To pair it with, this will be the five-year-old cheddar. I feel very fulfilled. That's actually one of my favorite combinations, that IPA and the, the sweet saltiness of the And this is this one. That's that. That's uh, made by Springside. So uh, this next one is Sprecher. So that's going to pair really well with our Gorgonzola. That is sharp. It'll get your attention. Like if you wake up on the morning, like a Sunday morning, you know, you just grab that thing. Yeah, it'll, it'll wake definitely wake you up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so the next one, River West Stein. Maybe give that a try, and that's gonna pair really well with our smoked brick. 
this is a German style cheese, this is gonna punch you right in the face in a good way. Alright, oh. sorry, I'm gonna. <laughs> I actually like it a lot. When you say a punch in the face, I was expecting something very strong. Yes. It's just got a real smoky flavor to it. Well, thank you so much for uh, yeah. sharing your knowledge and the cheese and beer. Uh, yeah, thanks so much. We kind of learn a little bit on, on how to do it right. I'm going to just hang around for a couple hours, finish this off. You that's can. Good. So that's what we do every day. I, that thing is a very good idea. I'll see you guys at the track. I'll, I'll be in a wheelbarrow. I'll be in a wheel to the track. The Milwaukee Mile is the oldest oval in the country, but the focus during the Indy Lights race was on bright futures. Spencer Pickett shattered the lap record in qualifying and started on pole. Fellow series rookie R.C. Enerson started alongside him. The two were on it from the drop of the green flag. Wheel to wheel in the opening laps. On lap three, Enerson slides around the outside to score the best seat in the house. Approaching the halfway point, Kyle Kaiser snaps loose in turn four. He does correct just in time to avoid Felix Sorales. Sorales moves into third. Enerson led the first 88 laps of the race, but Felix Sorales pounced in the closing laps. Each seeking their first career victory, the two duked it out around lap traffic, but it was the Velarde driver's day to shine. Felix Sorales wins at Milwaukee, followed by R.C. Enerson in second, and Velarde teammate Juan Pedrajita in third. First year in the Indy Lights, I think it is my second oval race, and to win at an oval race, to be competing against all these drivers that have had uh, a few years with the Pro Mazda or in the Indy Lights series, it's uh, very fantastic. The Mazda Road to Indy went back-to-back -back weekends traveling from Milwaukee to Iowa. The Iowa Speedway is just east of the capital of Des Moines, where both Pro Mazda and Indy Lights are set to race in this last oval of the season. Let's see what Anders has to say about the Speedway. Welcome to Iowa Speedway, also known as the surface of the sun. That's why I'm wearing shorts right now. It is so hot here right now. And the contrast between this and the Milwaukee Mile couldn't be any more different. This is super highly banked, 14 degrees in the corners and only seven eighths of a mile. So it's such a short track and almost like a bull ring. There's no chance for the drivers to rest on the straightaways here. You go so quickly through these corners. So immense, immense strain on the body here. So I think we're gonna see some amazing racing. And now I'm gonna take you for a lap around the track. All right, so I'm here with Santi Arusha at Iowa Speedway. Santi, what do you think of this track so far? All right, hello guys. Yes, uh, this track is very interesting, very fast track, so it should be really interesting. Okay, so here we are, tracking out of turn four, coming across start finish here. There's no chance to rest here whatsoever. As we come into turn one, what's important in this corner, Santi? This is a very difficult corner because you have a big, big bump right here. So if you take this bump on a, on a wrong line, you just will lose the car immediately. So this is a very difficult corner, the most difficult corner on the track. All right, and right now we're gonna experiment with a high line here on the track, and that could be quite airy as you go over that bump. So let's try it out here. We're gonna be up in the third lane here. Let's see how bad the bump is up here. And we're about to go over it, and there it is. Yep, there is a little bit of a bump there. Not as bad as at the bottom. All right, well, that's it here from Iowa Speedway. Thanks so much, Santi, for taking us around the track. And man, this place is bumpy, way bumpier than I can recall from last time I raced here. So I think we're gonna be in for a treat here in the race. Pro Mazda pulled onto the track first for a 100-lap race, but did so with pole sitter Garrett Grist and Yukos Racing teammates Jose Gutierrez and Timothy Bure moved to the tail end of the field for a violation. The Saturday afternoon heat was scorching, and so was wear on Tan's race pace. After inheriting the pole from Grist, Tan checked out. Sailing away into the hot summer sun, Tan leads wire to wire and shortens the gap in the point standings with his second oval win of the year. Andretti Autosport teammate Dalton Kellett finished second, Pato Award scored third to round out the podium, and Pato's teammate Santiago Arudia finished fifth. We, we had a really good car. We did a really good job race pace wise. Uh, I think we could have qualified a bit better. You know, four more races to go, it's not over, and you know, we're striving hard. Indy Lights followed with a 100 lap race of their own. Carlin teammates Max Chilton and Ed Jones locked out the front row, but R.C. Enerson could not wait to join the mix. Four wide into the first corner, Enerson moves from sixth into the top three immediately. 
Chilton and Jones get caught in a traffic jam, and Jones takes the opportunity. To the point he goes, but it wouldn't last long. Just a few moments later, Jones stumbles into slower cars again, and this time it's Chilton who powers his way right on through, back to P1. Chilton had never even driven on an oval until winter testing. His first career win in Indy Lights is one of the most surprising and emotional of his career. On your arm, you have the black band symbolizing your XF1 teammate, Jules Bianchi. How much emotional is this for you? What's going through your head actually being here after all you've been through this weekend? Yeah, it's, it's not easy. It's been a difficult nine months, to be really honest with you. Um, we've all been thinking of him and then um, the last night with the news it, was, it wasn't easy and it's actually been even harder today because um, you know I've had to put up with Jules for the last two years continuously showing me how to do it and I know if he was here today he would have done the same so you know this one's for him. What a time it's been with the Mazda Road to Indy over the last two weeks. Some great races in two great cities from Milwaukee to Newton, Iowa some new winners, some new experiences, but it's about time to turn out the lights here. The party is over. For now, we'll see you in mid-Ohio.